Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I'm bringing you today is called Bay Scene, and I painted this, oh, like back in November of uh, uh, 2023, and uh, I've just been sitting on it. I was just thinking, uh, what would be, you know, a nice bit of variety for you know, I don't like, because I do a couple different types of scenes, you know, so I thought this would be good on the channel. And uh, it's a three and a half by five, I believe. It could be four by six. I Anyway, it's been a while. What I really like about this painting, and hopefully you'll enjoy seeing too, is that it's got, you know, fairly thick application of paint and good, uh, co good colors in it. And I had had, I recall, I'm going off of memory, of course, but I recall I'd had this... Uh, reference prepared for a long time and I think I'd even took some sort of crack at it and was um, off it just wasn't happening uh, and uh, a lot, as a lot of times I might take another pass at working out the um, the reference image and the issues therein there's always issues in every reference image by the way now what color are we painting with here geez I, it looks like to me to be perylene with a lizard crimson or something like that uh, it's hard to say. It might just be, yeah, I, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I do change it up, but a lot of times I might vary what my underpainting color is depending on uh, the subject and, you know, is the underpainting going to be sitting around for a long time? Because if that's the case, like it, uh, you can use almost any color to underpaint um, as long as you're going to work directly on top of it. But um, I've had bad luck with black. Um, and some other colors too. They delaminate uh, quite often while you're, uh, if they're not quite dry enough. Anyway, um, yeah, I thought it'd be good to share this one. Uh, and uh, I, I believe it sold quite a while back. And this kind of scene does pretty well out here. Um, I would like to do more things like this. I think lately I've been doing a lot of trees with more bluish type skies and things go in roundabouts that way. I, I generally, um, I do uh, almost everything I do by feel, but it's always informed by experience. You know, you know it works and you know what doesn't. And I think a lot of times if you try and push things, like you say to yourself, oh, I have to do this or I have to do that, um, in, in, in one sense, you need to, the one thing you need to push yourself to do is to actually sit down and do some painting if you're interested in being a painter. And um, other than that, I wouldn't say, you know, maybe some people have ideas like, oh, I need to be good at florals or I need to be good at this or that. I'd say, I don't think that's the case either. I mean, uh, or figurative work. Let's say focus on, it's good to focus on one type of subject though, like uh, in my case it's landscapes, um, but I do paint the figures occasionally, I don't share much of that on this channel, but you know, every once in a while I, I, I do that. I have zero interest in things like still lifes, but uh, I had a student that said, well, what do you want to paint together next? And they're like, oh, a floral, and I'm like, okay. And if I had to do it, I can enjoy it, but... I don't get much. I don't get much from still lifes myself, um, and so I don't feel the need to master it. Uh, other things would be like figures in the landscape, things like that. Anyway, or uh, it, just with landscape painting alone, there's so many different types of scenes. Um, I think it's good to know uh, what you want to accomplish. You know, in my case, I'm into getting a certain feeling across, and uh, I was uh, talking about, actually I was writing some things down. Oh, I don't have that tablet here. I'll do that in another video. Uh, I, I want to add to it oh, basically my philosophy of art. But I'll give you some of it now just from memory. Like, okay, so here we are. And we're going to have a, a little ad for the book coming up. But um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll start taking you through it. Philosophy of art. What's the most important thing? Well, everything about art is pretty critical, but the most important thing, maybe 70%, 
maybe more is composition how your picture is composed and this isn't just true of paintings this would be true of any work of art uh, music or a book I was talking to a friend of mine who's an author uh, we were talking about composition and he, he was really relating to what I was saying you know you start with the big shapes and you got to move people through it through through the scene you need to have a sense of how you're going to do that and why why uh, the shapes are where they are and even if you're painting a very similar scene like I do a lot of these like lone trees with a bit of a landscape around it um, this is very small and simplified here I'm looking at one behind this here that I'm uh, was there's a way more kind of advanced version of this scene a lot more work what what's that the book okay we'll pick it up in a minute philosophy of art check out my book there's a good heap and helping of philosophy in there of course too I uh, frankly I consider painting to be you know <clears throat> It's quite a, uh, it requires quite a lot of um, intel intellectual processing to manage. There's a lot of factors uh, going on. Uh, that said, I have seen people, it doesn't mean you need to be a genius, but you need to be good at making decisions. You need to be good at following through on things, that's for sure. Anyway, uh, we're doing a bit of modulating there on that little hill in the back. I really like doing these little ones like this. This one came out really cool. And like I said, I think I'd, I sort of struggled on a version of this scene um, and it wasn't until I kind of freed myself up. Oh, so getting back into, uh, okay, philosophy of art. So composition is ever so important and it's very, it's the hardest thing to learn. So the way to learn what works compositionally is by um, painting a lot. And you can do a lot, like I've said in the channel quite a bit recently, you could do little you know draw a page full of little rectangles and make little compositions in each one with charcoal or a brush and it's some ink working your way through it <clears throat> one thing i've been really i mean i know i got a lot of viewers in this channel and i think a lot of you lurk kind of like i do and some of you are so kind enough to comment but you know i've really been thinking a lot about this composition thing and when, one thing i would love to do uh, uh to is is have people send me uh photos that they've tried to make paintings from that were that were a big fail but they felt something about the photo now this has been the case with me there's something about it that you're going that would make a good painting that would make and yet there's a lot of things that need to be reconciled and developed for that to happen you know and so one thing I was thinking would be great to do live would be to get my hands on some of these photos and uh, and just start going through where the issues are right what was the good bit and if you look at my live sessions and then uh, of course or if you're in the members area you can see quite a few videos there of me putting reference images together and whereas the painters in the past would be a lot of times creating their compositions by sketching um, in my case I'm creating comp the basic composition quite often just by manipulating my photo reference and now I have um, well, which I've been doing for a long time um, but I have been manipulating my photo reference the entire way through including manipulating photo reference for paintings that turned out quite bad where I didn't actually do uh, a sufficiently good job of, of addressing the compositional issues right um, it's through time and experience and exposure oh I think that underpainting was a bit of a purple I, I had a purple thing in mind with this you can see I'm really playing it up now anyway uh, I think it'd be great to just uh, you know, take on some photos of people uh, that they took preferably because uh, there's a lot of things I won't do uh, on the live videos because uh, if it's um, reference that's been cobbled together from various sources or whatnot, uh, I got to make sure that it's you know 100% someone's own photo. Yeah. Anyway, what's next after that? Philosophy of art. Well, you have to express yourself over that framework in a way that is loose, fairly loose and expressive. And if you have a an idea that you're going to make super tight. Uh, now maybe you are Maxfield Parrish. He could do it. And most people 
can't be that tight and make something that's expressive that's um, beautiful because what happens is um, the application of tightness the application of all that focused attention becomes uncomfortable for the uh, person looking at your art so uh, all these areas of stress and strain the overall effect is going to be one of stress and strain so it won't matter then if your composition is really nice because you're basically blocking people up by um, focusing their attention too much on groupings of extensive amounts of detail you know and usually that's the culprit uh, I've said it before and a bit of bears repeating the world's getting different people here you know uh, look at this little painting imagine if this was a 30 by 40 <laughs> instead of a, a little three and a half by five right um, big shapes pretty colors you got shapes in good areas and everything's balanced people will accept that you don't have to render uh, you know we still got a bit more paint to do on this but you'll see I never really got into uh, like these particular trees out here there you have lots of branches you know and even on my bigger paintings I don't paint most of them um, because the more branches I lay down the more complex it becomes and the more I stress about how all these branches are interacting um, uh, the, you can't have that stress or strain on the canvas you just can't although I must tell you that if you are an inexperienced painter you also need to make those stress or strain -y paintings okay it's just how it is you've got to work your way through it there's no um, I, I don't know I mean I, I, I'm I'm pretty uh, pretty clever guy but Maybe somebody was really, really, really smart would just be able to skip. I, I did have a, a student who was very, very smart, and she was able to advance very, very, very rapidly, you know. So I do think that that would be um, definitely an enhancement, and uh, you know. But we all got to work with what we got, and I don't really care how smart you are. Um, in most cases, unless you work through something like painting, painting, landscape painting is one of the things to, that is not that easy to do. Uh, you need to have an aptitude for it. Now, there's a lot of things I wouldn't have an aptitude for. Don't ask me to fix the engine in your car <laughs> or build your house, but I'll build a painting for you, you know, and, uh, what I love about it is it's it's uh you know I just heard a quote today uh someone was saying how and I, I haven't gone this route and I don't want to go this route but I do think there's some value to the idea where someone says I think they were like a comic book or a cartoonist and they were saying that it takes them longer and longer to make things because the more they know the more they have to consider every aspect and that I think you know where that's true for me is it's happened uh, that I'm spending more time developing the reference image and that's pulling it back full circle to the beginning of the video when I was talking about with the composition that's because that's where I'm I'm solving these compositional issues and if I have the compositional issues solved and everything fairly well balanced um, and not everything is going to be there's going to be a lot of things in that reference image that need to be removed It is not a replacement for the simplification process that has to go on and occur when actually painting But as far as getting the big shapes where they need to be and stuff like that That's where it's at and and so that's where I'm spending more time, but my feeling is I, I a lot of time will make multiple paintings from a reference image uh, generally I found that just recently it's not that good to do it one right on top of a previous one but it is very valuable to do it especially on the time and distance and uh, who, at the end of the day who cares how long it really took to put something together um, one of the beautiful things about paintings is that they're going uh, ideally they're going to survive us and um, they're going to be an object in the world that people are going to be looking at and uh, using in their homes to beautify the place. So anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you're having a great uh, April and uh, happy 420. And everyone take good care. Stay out of trouble until I come back with another video. God bless you and your family.
fight the power.